You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. and I want to bring the uh, February 4th, 2021 meeting of special meeting of the Inland Wetlands uh, and Watercourse Agency to order. Uh, it is 7.01. We have a special meeting uh, to discuss uh, bonds. I guess first thing I need to do is um, call everyone to order and uh, take a roll call. Uh, let's see. Commissioner Sullivan. Sullivan, present. Commissioner Begerman. Commissioner Begerman, present. Commissioner Boda. You're muted. Commissioner Boda. Commissioner Boda. Yep, Commissioner Boda, present. Commissioner Basserman, present. Uh, Commissioner uh, Staff Jamie. Frederick? Uh, present, Jamie Frederick. Also, it looks like Eric is joining us now. Okay, and Abby? New York, present. New York. Okay, and is Eric, before we get rolling there? All right, Eric is joined us. There he is. Eric, we're taking a roll call. Hold on. Say again, you're muted. Say, roll call. You're present. Eric, you're with us, right? I'm with you. Okay, there we go. Thank you much. Uh, this uh, is a virtual meeting. It's being conducted uh, in accordance with Executive uh, Order 7B. I think everyone on the call is uh, familiar with the Zoom uh, protocol for the meeting. And so we'll, um, we'll get into it uh, right now. Uh, the material for this evening is in the Dropbox, including the, uh, the letter that uh, requested that we look into the bonding and some comments from uh, town council. Um, just to be clear, uh the statutes that we operate under from connecticut are silent uh, on the bonds so it basically comes down to the rules of the road being our regulations uh regarding bonds for the record uh it is section 13 of Brantford's rules and regulations 13 one says upon approval of the application and prior to commencement of approved activities the applicant may, oh, there we go, at the, at the discretion of the agency be required to file a bond in the amount approved by the agency or its duly authorized agent. The bond is to be in the form of cash, check, or a certified check payable to the town of Brantford. Such funds will be deposited with, in, into an escrow account. Uh, unused funds will be returned upon completion of the work for which the bond was submitted. For bonds over 10,000, the Inland Wetlands and Watercourse Agency may approve a surety bond for no more than 50% of the bond amount. The bond shall specify that it will not be released without written consent of the agency. And then Section 13.2, the bond or surety shall be conditioned upon completion with all provisions of these regulations and terms, conditions, and limitations established in the permit. So on... Um, um, oops, where's my, uh... So on uh, February 14th, uh, we have the first uh, 
of the meeting materials, and that's the uh, or January 13th, I should say. Uh, we have a letter asking the um, uh, agency to consider some changes to the um, to the uh, bond requirement uh, for their uh, application uh, with a specific uh, three-point uh, request reduction in the 50% cash requirement and a substitute the difference with bonding. Uh, item two, a staged payment related to the progress of implementation of erosion controls and the use of an alternative cash equivalent such as an irrevocable letter of credit. Um, so, uh, Jamie, I'm going to turn it over to you and uh, maybe you can walk us through uh, uh, where we're at at this point. Uh, Jamie Frederick and the wetland agent. Um, so after the last meeting, I uh, did send some questions over to town council, which were responded to and sent out to the commission. So hopefully everyone's had a time, some time to look over those responses. Um, in regards to the reduction of the 50% cash requirement, the regulations as written do not allow for that. Um, the commission could modify the regulation for moving forward, but at this time there's no uh, venue that would, no ability to, to, to offer that. Um, a stage payment related to the progress of implementation of erosion controls. I think the commission, as they were discussing at the last meeting, could look at um, phasing the bond with phases of construction. So this project for 1151 West Main Street, IW 191101, there were two phases. Um, so I think it would be reasonable if the commission wants to um, entertain the thought of allowing the bond to be by phase with the, the condition that no work on phase two shall occur until phase two bond has been submitted uh, and that failure to do so would be a violation of the permit. Um, and also as part of that, the first phase includes the mitigation area. So I would recommend that the commission require all of the mitigation bond requirements to be included in that initial phase. Um, and then the third one is use of an alternative cash equivalent, such as irrevocable letter of credit, um, which I believe town councils, again, short answer was no. Um, and then again, also, if you look at the regulation language, uh, it says, um, the bond is to be in the form of cash check or certified check payable to the town of Brantford. Such funds will be deposited into an escrow sub account. Um, and you would not be doing that with a letter of credit. And I, I think the intent behind that is so that the cash is available in case there's an immediate need to uh, have something implemented on site. So I have the language from section, section 13 and then also the applicant um, or the permit holder slash developer has submitted a request to modify condition number four of the permit essentially looking at um, a bond shall be submitted to cover the completion of the above items and maintenance of all project erosion and sediment controls for the site development. Permit holders to submit to the IW agent an estimate to cost of the cost to bond these items for the agent's review and approval. After approval by the agent, the bond is to be submitted consistent with section 13 of the regulations prior to start of work. So I think what the commission would be looking at modifying would the, be the prior to start of work. So phase one would be prior to start of work and phase two would be prior to start of work of phase two. So just basically clarifying that it can be broken into phases. Um, and I did take a stab at kind of drafting up some thoughts I had on the subject. If you want, I can read this to you or it's on the screen if somebody else wants to take a... Um, You don't have to use this language. I just wanted to kind of throw something out there to get the conversation started. Um, Jamie, uh, this is uh, Peter Basserman for uh, Commissioner. Why, why don't you read it into the record for, for those that uh, may not have a visual um, opportunity when they review? Sure. Uh, Jamie Frederick in the wetland agent. So 
um, the comment is, should the commission determine to, determine to allow the bond to be submitted by phases, possible language to approve a modification is provided below. Um, and that language would be condition number four of permit IW 191101, 1151 West Main Street is modified to allow for the required bond to be submitted in two phases mm -hmm. on the approved plans. An initial bond must be submitted prior to start of any site work and shall cover the phase one sediment and erosion control measures, the restoration slash mitigation area work and the monitoring reports. The additional bond funds for phase two sediment and erosion controls must be submitted prior to start of any site work associated with phase two as outlined in the approved plans. At least 50% of each bond must be submitted in the form of cash check or certified check. The remaining 50% may be submitted as a surety bond consistent with section three of the regulations. Surety must be reviewed and approved by town staff and town council. And then just a note, starting work on phase two prior to the submission of the corresponding bond funds is a violation of the permit terms and will result in a stop work order until the bond has been submitted. Additional enforcement action as provided in section 14 of the regulations and chapter 196 of the town ordinance may be taken at the discretion of the agent or its duly authorized agent or the agency or its duly authorized agent. So for I mean, this is Go ahead. This is Commissioner Boda. So I'm looking in the Dropbox. What What is the name of this particular document? Jamie Frederick and the Wetland Agent. It is uh, it's the staff report. And I did not get it added until today because I was working on it today. So it is. Jamie, if you put your uh, cursor above the tab, um, it'll tell you the file name. Uh, Jamie Frederick and the wetland agent is 1151 West Main Street staff report. And it's located in the discussion folder. <coughs> it's the second to last item in my listing. Uh, Chairman uh, Basterman, this is Commissioner Rose. Uh, <clears throat> it, it might um, make sense to, well, I, I guess there needs to be a discussion amongst the members beforehand, but I was gonna suggest that you ask um, uh, Giordano representing Queech whether this helps to solve the problem they're trying to solve. Um, but beyond that, I make a point, and and I don't want to be misinterpreted as being unsupportive. I think you know Giordano is as reputable a company as can be, and is highly qualified to do this work. And bonding, of course, um, is used to protect. Uh, the country, the, the town, and I don't think anybody needs protection from Giordano, but when I read the notes from the uh, attorney, the reference was constantly being made to the applicant. <clears throat> and um, if my memory serves me, the applicant is the developer in this case, not Giordano or Queech or a subsidiary of theirs. And to be technically correct, um, if I'm correct in my recollection that the applicant that is discussed by the town attorney um, is the developer, then it should be the developer who is posting the bond and whom we're dealing with. And again, I'm not trying to cause a problem for uh, Giordano. I, I support anything that helps them, but I just want to point out that it seemed inconsistent. Mr. Bassman, I, um, the request, uh, if memory serves me right, came from uh, uh, Queech Corporation. But the applicant isn't, we're not, the, the applicant is the, is the applicant in the permit, is it not? Jamie Frederick and the wetland agent. So in the past, we've had either the permit holder or the developer submit bonds for a project. It's kind of up to them to determine who's gonna submit the funds. Um, I did request that the permit holder submit a re the request for the permit modification. Um, so we do have an email from attorney John Nuff who re represents the permit holder uh, requesting the modification to condition four as was discussed between myself and um, Giordano. So we do have that request from the applicant. Um, if you want, I can 
Yeah, attorney Nuff wasn't able to be on the call tonight. Um, so that's, that's why we're we're here and we're posting the bond for the developer uh, because we're the ones doing the work. Um, and so that's that's the reason that uh, Giordano is posting the bond. Uh, this is Commissioner Rose. I certainly that's clear. Um, but again, I and it's it's enough that you say that you have the request, Jamie. I'm just pointing out that the attorneys, uh, town attorneys' comments were directed at the applicant, which I think correctly is the developer, um, not a contractor working for the developer. And if the request comes from them, then and you have that request, and the inconsistency is resolved. And then, uh, obviously, um, they're imposing that on their contractor, in this case, Giordano, which is their prerogative, and we're trying to find a way to lessen the, the, the strain. Um, so, got it. Uh, Commissioner Baskin, I guess to Commissioner Rose's um, first comment, uh, I guess I'll uh, turn the floor over to, um, uh, I guess, I don't know which Giordano, but the, the Giordano that would like to review the material that's been presented so far, determine whether uh, that does help uh, and in their consideration, uh, and they can make uh, additional comments uh, as long as they have the floor. Sure. I think, um, I think it does, you know, phasing certainly helps, um, and, and it, it makes sense. The one comment that I would have, and it goes back to our first, our earlier discussion, um, is that, you know, there's, uh, this is the winter time. So the wetland plants are not gonna grow now. So we will, uh, when, I, when I was looking at this at phase one and I had a, a phone call with Jamie a little bit earlier and I read the email about including the restoration um, items in phase one, uh, I think that some of that it, it makes sense. I, I think we could put the placing of the topsoil in phase one, but phase two um, will, uh, will be underway by the time you're in the planting season. So the, you, you wouldn't be able to plant the plants uh, in phase one anyhow due to weather. Um, so what I would suggest is uh, it makes sense. It's not the way I, I formulated it here in the, in what I sent to Jamie, but I, I, I think it would, it would be reasonable to slide the topsoil line item from phase two um, over to phase one. That's about, that's yeah. Scroll down a little bit more, Jamie. Okay. Zoom it back up a little bit. That's the 5910. Um, that would be, that would make sense to, to, put that up into phase one, because that's that's what's gonna happen, right? We're gonna put the sill fence in, we're gonna go into the upper wetland area there, uh, create the, the expanded wetland, uh, you know, regrade it, put the topsoil down, stabilize and move on to phase two. So um, then once the planting season is available and the landscaper, you know, the, the season is correct, the landscaper will come in and install the plants, um, you know, as soon as possible uh, to make sure we get good, um, good stabilization and, and good uh, growth before the, the summertime hits. So that's, that's the goal. Um, and so I think uh, that would make sense, you know, that, that makes sense to me. Um, I think I would keep the, uh, the, the, the pin oaks and the wetland plugs and the seeding and restoration um, in phase two, um, where I had it. Um, as far as mitigation reports, if, if you wanna split that in half, you know, you, you're gonna need one report, right? When he comes out and finishes uh, and we put the topsoil down to verify that, you know, we've over excavated, we put the material back, the topsoil's in place, the, the, the material's there. Um, but then once the once the actual plantings get get put in again in phase two, you'll you'll need some reports there as well. So if you want to, you know, maybe split that item in half, um, that's fine. Um, but uh, that would that's the the comment that I that I would have um, on this is 
is that uh, because really and truly we'll be into phase two, I will explain it to Jamie on the phone to, uh, this afternoon, we'll be into phase two, I would say, the, we're supposed to receive the notice to proceed on this project next week sometime. Um, that's why you see the equipment sitting out there. We're just waiting on the official uh, letter from Texas to come in. Um, so we'll get this work done and we'll transition into phase two in, in March sometime uh, to have the, and then as soon as uh, the, the planting season opens up for the, the plugs and the pin oaks, uh, that'll be installed. So we'll be transitioning into phase two rather quickly, but it allows, but the, the phasing is certainly important because it, it allows us to um, span the, span the, um, the items within the requisition periods of the project. Um, which is the, the way it should be. I, um, I understand the, the, the 50 percent bit with the, uh, with the bonding company and it's definitely something I think you guys should really look at. Um, and it's you know just because there's a myriad of, uh, of issues with, with the way you guys have it set up. but uh, that's probably a discussion for another time and I'd be more than happy to sit with you guys from a contractor standpoint and from somebody who actually installs this stuff every day uh, and take you through sort of what what's what and how that would work in a, on a large scale commercial project, right? Probably for Billy Bob, the homeowner, you know, the way you have it is fine because they're putting in, a, you know, 50, 60 feet of sill fence. It probably gets put in wrong by Joe Blow, the home improvement contractor. And yes, that makes sense. But on a large scale commercial project like this, um, it's just apples and oranges. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely be more than happy if you guys wanted to, to help out if you wanna relook at those regs. But um, as far as this project for right now, you know, we certainly appreciate you guys taking the time to have the meeting and looking at, um, at, at breaking this thing up into the phasing the way the BL laid it out. I mean, that's, that is the way I was on a conference call for three and a half hours with BL and the developer down in Texas is going through uh, exactly how this is all going to work out. And, and uh, we had to dig some additional test bits up there and make sure that everything was identified correctly. And uh, so that is the first thing we're going to be doing and it'll be happening pretty quick. Thank you, Vincent. Um, Commissioner Bassman, uh, Jamie, uh, any reaction to the uh, comments by you, Mr. Giudamo? Uh, Jamie Frederick and the wetland agent. I just wanted to, I, I understand why he is um, making the recommendation that he is. However, the reason why I made the recommendation that the entire restoration enhancement area monitoring reports be required in phase one is because once they dig, start digging back there, you're going to want to see those things completed. So they become something that needs to happen to satisfy the permit. So if you don't have that bond money on hand, if something falls through with the project and they walk away, you have no, no repercussions for making sure that this happens. You would have uh, enough yes, and, and the cash on hand allows it to be rectified uh, immediately without having to jump through all kinds of hoops. So um, I'm going to, I guess now, uh, look for comments from the uh, rest of the commission staff on their reaction to um, the phasing uh, requirements associated with, or the phasing opportunity associated with the bond requirement. This is Commissioner Boda. Um, right. Jamie, can you, can you pull the, I, I, I've, been back in the um, Dropbox and I can't find that language that you had up earlier.
So this is Commissioner Wood. Um, the, the plan that we just looked at or that outline that we just looked at where um, the suggestion was that the laying down of topsoil be moved to phase one and that the other components be in phase two is is that different than what was originally approved in the permit uh jamie frederick and the wetland agent so originally the permit required that all bond funds be submitted up front prior to start of work so uh, wait wait sorry let me let me clarify my question not not the not the not the bond part. So we're talking about the bond part, but um, the separation of the work and the mitigation area divided between phase one and phase two. Did that exist in the original permitted application? Um, Jamie Frederick and the wetland agent. I forget if it was, I think it was December. Um, the It was November or December, the applicant requested a modification to one of the other permit conditions, which required that the mitigation work occur first because they were looking to start in the winter and they couldn't plant in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, so the commission granted approval for them to do the earthwork associated with the mitigation work and then start on phase two with the understanding that they would go back and plant the mitigation area as soon as it was seasonally appropriate to do so. So the phase one as originally approved has been kind of split into two, has been split by the seasonal accommodation the commission has already granted. So generally by the way the permit was originally approved, I would say that those items, the restoration and enhancement area and monitoring reports would have been part of phase one. So this is Commissioner Boda. So then what I'm what I'm making of this in uh, right now is that the phase one, separate from the, the document that we just looked at. So the document that we just looked at had the mitigation work in phase the, the bonding portion of the mitigation work in phase two with the exception of moving the topsoil to phase one but I think what I'm hearing you say is that we would keep phase one and phase two similar to what it is but that the bonding for the mitigation work should all be part of the first phase one uh, bond is that an accurate summary? Uh, Jamie Frederick in the wetland agent. I, I, I think so. I'm not 100% sure. In the middle, I got a little bit confused. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm saying that I would recommend the restoration enhancement area be considered part of phase one because as the plans were approved, it was a part of phase one. And um, the commission has allowed them to move on to phase two if they complete the earthwork with phase one and it's not seasonally appropriate for them to plant. So if you would like, I can uh, pull up the construction schedule for phase one um, for you to look at if that would be helpful. It would take me a minute to find the right plan set. I'm not, this is Commissioner Boda, I'm not sure that at this moment, it, it will be because I think it's a it's it's really more of the kind of abstract like where where do these things belong in terms of the the bonding, right? And so, and and I and I also having been on the commission as long as I have um, would not want the mitigation to go behind anything else in terms of the bonding. We, we, we have been caught with that before, and I'm sure that you're, you know, your, your plans are to move ahead, you will move ahead, and in which case the bond will be returned. Um, but that's not always worked out. And so this is why we have made it a practice and a predictable practice for developers to know that um, the bond for mitigation always goes at the front end. 
um, we did recognize that the, the plantings obviously can't happen. We're not going to hold up phase two. And I think it's also um, not been our practice to divide the bond into phases, but having heard the, the comment and concern from the, um, the developer, I think we want to be as reasonable as we can, knowing that our mandate and, and our purview is, is inland wetlands and water courses to protect those. So um, at the moment, and unless someone on the commission can make an argument otherwise, my, my, my thinking is that we, we can go ahead and amend to have the bonds um, be put forward with this, the, the phases of construction and that the bond for mitigation in its entirety be included, not separated, but in its entirety be included with the bond for phase one. That sounds, it's Commissioner Baskin, that sounds almost like a motion. <laughs> well, I think I was sort of putting the idea out and I would be interested if, if there are other commissioners that want to um, agree, disagree, elaborate, clarify. This is Commissioner Begemon. I think that what you just said also reflects what Jamie Fer Frederick was asking for in as the inland wetland agent, correct? I think that, that this commission board, right? This is an agreement. Jamie Frederick in the wetland agent, yes it is. And my recommendation is based on past practice of how the commission has operated. And also because the, the phase one activity is the disturbance where the mitigation area is going. So I think to not require the, the bond to remedy that activity or to complete that activity um, would leave the commission open to, to issues down the road, potentially. And also be hard to, I mean, you'd have to apply that kind of practice across the board. And I'm not sure that's something the commission wants to establish. Uh, this is Commissioner Rose. <clears throat> so just to be clear, and I'm restating what I said before, it, it's important to remember that the, the bonding is an issue that goes toward the applicant, in this case, a Texas developer. And developers have constantly changing agendas and, and circumstances, and it's why bonding is so important. The unusual circumstance here is it's being, it's being um, imposed on a local contractor and we're all sensitive to one wanting to be supportive of development certainly supportive of local business um and and yet the bond is less to do in reality with the performance by the contractor in this case than it is by the development and the developer <clears throat> um, the contractor will do whatever work he's getting paid properly to do um, and this contractor is certainly capable of doing everything appropriately, but at any moment, the developer's circumstances could change, and it's, it's performance that the bond is really directed toward. And for that reason, I think we should do whatever we can to support the, the, the local business and Giordano in this case and, and find ways to, to meet their requests but I don't think we should be considering changing anything in the regulations because what is unusual here is that the bonding requirement is being imposed downstream from the very entity that in concept we're seeking bonding performance from, and that is the developer. And we don't need to change the regulations to accomplish that we just have an unusual circumstance here that we all want to be supportive of and and that's the reason we're trying so hard uh, this commissioner bassman I, I i think you know for clarity purposes um you know i think yes the bonding area is something that needs to uh, be, be looked at um a cursory look at uh, other towns etc um 
suggests that there's a kind of a, a, a wide um, uh, range of what towns have in their regulations regarding bonds. Um, I, I think uh, we need to be conscious when we uh, review the bond uh, area in our regulations uh, that we can apply it uniformly and consistently. Um, and so that's that's uh, for another day, as uh, Commissioner Rose uh, uh, has suggested, and clearly Town Council has suggested there is nothing uh, near term that we can do uh, to change the regulations. There's a process involved, you know, where a public hearing would be required, etc. Obviously, the uh, 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 the company that's doing the work on the uh, two sites is looking to get going uh, long before uh, that public hearing and the process that we would engage would be complete. Um, at, at the same time, um, you know, we have an opportunity here to with phasing to lessen the burden uh, for the work being done uh, consistent with the permit that's already been issued. Uh, and I think at this point in time, um, the phasing is uh, probably the, the only aspect of uh, the request that we could probably uh, accommodate. I'm certainly willing to hear from other commissioners on their reaction to um, uh, the material that's been presented this evening. Commissioner Bagman, I think that also that, I believe in November when we talked about the bond, um, it was reduced based on what the contractor was saying were, were some of the costs for some of the materials. I think it was this project. And I think we just have to be careful of precedent, right? So we have a, a great cr contractor that's local, but what if in another project that somebody else comes in and says, well, you did it for this contractor. Um, so I think we just need to be mindful of that. And so I think what's been suggested by Jamie and Suzanne and um, what Peter Bassman just said makes a lot of sense. Uh, just Commissioner Bass, but the other thing, Commissioner Rose, is is I, I don't think it's uh, beyond uh, uh, reason um, to say that there might thing, be things that happen uh, with uh, local folk um, in, in terms of, of uh, not being able to complete on time, uh, whether it's you know weather or, or other other opportunities present themselves, etc. So I wouldn't lay 100% of the a potential risk on um, uh, on the Texas uh, operation. Any other comments from the commission? So this is Commissioner Boda. I, I guess then, um, unless anybody's ready to say otherwise, I think then we look at um, the language that's here. I've been trying, to, I, I wanted to print it, which is why I was looking for it so that I could jot anything down, but I, I, I can't get to it. So um, if we can look at that language and determine if there's anything that we want to change on it, otherwise then we can um, turn that into a motion because I think that it sounds like we're in agreement. Um, so it, it, maybe we just work on the wording and not have a three hour meeting. Commissioner Bassman, I, I guess, are we clear on what's, when we say phase one and phase two, uh, they're not defined terms, but where would we reference the phase one and phase two aspect? On the construction drawings. All right, so. Amy Frederick and the wetland agent, yeah, it relates back to the construction drawings. And if you wanted to, you, um, you could add reference to the estimate that was provided by the um, contractor regarding the split between phase one and phase two. We did take a cursory look at it today and didn't see any issues with it. Um, and we were satisfied with the split on like the silt fence and whatnot. Um, but it also relates back to the site plans and that's referenced already. Two phases based on the approved plans. This Commissioner Massman, then can we uh, add some words after 
I don't know where, but on this uh, material in front of us to talk about those construction drawings, the date, the date of those construction drawings. Well, this is Commissioner Boda. Wouldn't it just be the approved plans? Because we haven't, the plans haven't changed since they were approved. You're correct. Okay. Sorry. Works for me. Is there, are there any changes? This is Commissioner, but are there any changes suggested? I mean, I, I can make this motion, but I'm, I'm, I can say this as a motion. Anyone on the commission could say this as a motion. Um, I'm not seeing anything that I really. Right. Here's your Commissioner Bassman. Why don't you go ahead, Commissioner Boda, and, and make the motion? All right. Um, All right, this, this is Commissioner, but I'd like to um, make a motion that we add a condition to number four of permit IW number 19.11.01, 1151 West Main Street, that they are allowed to modify the required bond to be submitted in two phases based on the approved plans. An initial bond must be submitted prior to the start of any work and shall cover the phase one sediment and erosion control measures, the restoration mitigation area work and the monitoring reports. The additional bond funds for phase two sediment and erosion controls must be submitted prior to the start of any site work associated with the phase two as outlined in the approved plans. At least 50% of each bond must be submitted in the form of a cash of cash, check, or certified check. The remaining 50% may be submitted as a surety bond consistent with section 13 of the regulations. Surety must be reviewed and approved by town staff and town council. Starting work on phase two prior to the submission of the corresponding bond funds is a violation of the permit and will result in a stop work order until the bond has been submitted additional enforcement action as provided in section 14 of the regulations and chapter 196 of the town ordinance may be taken at the discretion of the agent or at the agency or its duly authorized agent. This motion um, is being made after careful consideration of past practice um, and the, the nature of the work and the nature of the cost to um, a business here in town while being mindful of our regulations. And with guidance from the town attorney. Sounds like a complete motion. Is there a second? Commissioner Begemon, second. Any further discussion? Take a roll call vote. Commissioner Begeman. Commissioner Begeman, aye. Commissioner Rose. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Sullivan. Commissioner Sullivan, aye. Commissioner Basserman, aye. Wait, me. Thank you, Commissioner Boda. Commissioner Boda, aye. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda is the, oh, I see something down here about a silk sock, uh, Jamie. Uh, Jamie Frederick and the wetland agent. I just want to also address the fact that, uh, there was a request also made relevant to 434 in those letters, um, based on our discussion and the fact that the phasing was the only way that we really sought to accommodate the request. Um, there isn't really a phasing ability component to the erosion controls for that site. So I don't really think there's a way to accommodate the request, but um, I think just general um, 
discussion or agreement from the commission would be appropriate. Can you, uh, Commissioner Bassman, can you um, uh, solidify what the request was regarding the silk sock and why you don't think it's appropriate? Uh, Jamie Frederick and the Welland and Asian to clarify, I'm not, we're not there yet. We're on item 1A um, II of the agenda. So we're still on bonds. Um, so there was a request for bond relief in regards to 1151 West Main Street, but also to 434 East Main Street permit number IW 20701. This is for an office building and associated site improvements. Uh, they are putting a retaining wall along the rear of the property and the erosion controls um, that are required for that project are essentially all required up front um, or required as part of the work that's initiating up front. So I, I don't really see how it could be phased. Right, and you have the full bond permit, you have the full bond amount in cash and in the, by the surety for that project. Jamie so I, the the thought process was that because essentially all, not all, but 90% of the uh, erosion controls were in place on 434. Um, and you've, you're, you guys are sitting on, I don't know, 20 some odd thousand dollars of cash already uh, on that project. The, th the thought process was perhaps it could be applied because it's the same company, but we understand it's a different permit but you have that value of cash uh, that we thought would be able to be uh, attributed to the uh, 1151 property as well, since it's sitting in a bank account for the town already and the erosion control work is in place and properly working and is actually, there's more out there than it's shown on the drawings. So uh, that was the thought process behind that. Um, and if, you know, you guys uh, could fit, find a way to sequence that in. Um, that would be fine. But listening to the discussion here, I'm not sure exactly uh, how that would work out. But that was the thought process behind the letters. Commissioner Bassman, I guess the only way would be to have to reapply or, or change the permit to phase the permit so that the bond then can be applied accordingly. But I'm not sure that's worth the effort. Yeah, I think we could we could deal with that. Uh, maybe I can just reach out to Jamie or uh, just talk about that. And you know, at another time. Um, I, I, yeah. So I think I think just putting that to bed um, and, and sort of calling that off the agenda. You know, just closing that item on the agenda. I think is is appropriate. Okay. Uh, Next up is item 1B, discussing the next steps for reviewing um, potential modifications to the inland wetland regulations, the town of Bond, uh, Brantford regarding their bond requirements. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, you know, a uh, kind of a full agenda coming up in um, at the next meeting. Uh, we also are looking at our fees, um, and we need to talk about that uh, also to have another meeting in February. So um, it seems to me we're not going to be able to get to this um, uh, bond issue uh, for a couple months. But, uh, uh, Jamie, if you have some different thoughts, uh, I'd love to hear them. Uh, Jamie Frederick and the Wetland Agent. Um, as staff, we can start working on what we can, pulling things together, maybe taking a look at the zoning regulations um, and the comments that we've received, any other comments that might come in, just compiling them all so that when we can really dive into it, we're ready to go. Um, and I also just put that on there in case there was any comments that commissioners might have, but I think those kind of came up in the discussion already. Commissioner Bassman, again, you know, from a statute standpoint, um, we, we uh, from a legal standpoint, et cetera, we, we can uh, certainly amend the regulations. Um, 
I think the the key here is to be able to come up with regulations that we can apply uh, uniformly uh, across the board. Um, certainly, the party that's with us uh, tonight has got a great reputation and you know, do a lot of work. Um, uh, but unfortunately, usually in the regulations, etc., um, if you want to be uh, transparent and, and uniform, it becomes difficult uh, to separate uh, those um, uh, applicants uh, like the ones before us that I uh, with uh, ones that may not have the same uh, reputation. So uh, regulations that we have are um, certainly a benefit and that it allows for uniformity. Um, but I can also see some um, some downsides with the uh, uh, uniform application for large companies that have uh, great reputations. Any other commissioner comments regarding um, thinking uh, about bond uh, issues uh, that we would need to discuss in the future? Anything that we would want direct staff to kind of take a look at? Mr. Commissioner Rose, um, I, I think that it might be worth considering um, language that would preclude an applicant for delegating bonding to anybody other than the applicant itself. This circumstance wouldn't even be before us if the applicant were responsible and providing the bond, which is appropriate. Whether or not the applicant, in this case, the developer, wants to impose um, internal bonding or security issues between them and a subcontractor is between them and a subcontractor. But in this case, it's being made an issue for the town and the and Inland Wetlands Agency. And I would argue that it's, it, it is in a certain sense, it's inappropriate. The applicant isn't uh, the subcontractor doing the work, it's the developer. And um, I, I think that there, an argument can be made that the developer, or again, the applicant for the Inland Wetlands permit is the one whose name uh, and whose cash should be bonding. Okay. I guess uh, that closes out item one. Item two, permit modification request in the wetland 1911-1151 West Main. Construct proposed bank and grocery store, including parking and storm damage. And I guess under that consideration to allow the use of silt socks in the place of the silt fence. Jamie Frederick in the wetland agent. So this is the same project we were discussing, 1151 West Main Street. They're requesting for phase one to be allowed to use um, a silt sock in place of silt fence as they are looking to do the activity in the winter and quite a bit of um, excavations required for trenching, properly trenching in a silt fence. There's a lot less ground disturbance associated with the staking of the silt sock. So they're requesting to utilize this for phase one. Um, I also have a memo from the project engineer and some comments from the town engineer. The town engineer is in support of the use as long as it's demonstrated that the correct sizing uh, of silt sock is being used and that the slopes um, have been assessed to make sure that it's appropriate for the site. Um, and the project en engineer addresses that in regards to the um, area where the main activity is occurring for phase one. So when you're ready, let me know and I can switch over to another document. Right, so what these are compost filled, um, essentially we call them socks, but it's a, it's a fabric uh, filled with, with compost. Um, and it, it in actually, a, a lot of states right now, um, these are the requirement as opposed to silt fence. Um, they, they actually provide uh, better clarity. Uh, they, they are better at allowing the water to pass through and filter out the sediment 
actually better than silk fence does. Um, and these ones, the ones that we're pr providing here and pro providing here have been properly sized, um, reviewed it with BL, the, the engineer of record. Um, so these are, and they, these are completely biodegradable, you know, so they're, they're green. Well, silt fence is plastic, you know, and, it, and it, it needs to be removed and disposed of at a landfill. Um, these are completely 100% biodegradable. Uh, so, and it's compost, and so then, you know, it helps with the with the fertilization of the ground and all that. But um, the biggest thing about these is actually the the, the clarity of the water and the, the, the usefulness of them. So, like, thank you. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Bassman, Jamie, do we have uh, local experience with silt socks? Uh, Jamie Frederick in the wetland agent. I've seen it on a couple of sites. Uh, I've not seen it as the primary on sites. Um, I don't. I don't think that there's necessarily anything wrong with it. We just haven't really had much experience with it. Um, I was reading this document is quite a few pages. I I think around 10 pages or so. So I was reading some of the information. There's information on the proper maintenance um, and the permit itself requires that they do weekly erosion control inspections and reports and, and, it, and also inspections and reports after storms of greater than a quarter inch of rainfall. So there would be um, routine mo monitoring and reporting requirements, which would uh, hopefully early catch any issues so that anything that needed to be addressed could be addressed. Um, one of the, I, I think there are a couple different practices, one of which is you can put um, the socks back to back or you can kind of stack them on top of each other to increase the capacity and um, longevity of the, the control in areas that may need it. So, um, I do have some possible language for the commission to consider regarding this. Um, if the commission were to approve it, I would just maybe suggest that the commission add as part of that condition of approving the change that any recommendations made by the project engineer, um, town staff, or uh, the erosion control inspector be implemented as, as soon as possible. Um, regarding any areas that might need addressing. Um, I'll hop over real quick to, I believe, the memo from BL companies. Um, so the purpose is, of this memo is to justify the use of silt sock instead of silt fence in the southeastern portion of the property. The slope throughout that area of interest is approximately 0.4% with a maximum slope length of approximately 280 feet. The maximum slope length allowable based on the table on page 15 of the Filtrex section one construction manual table 1.3 C below is 600 feet or an, for an eight inch compost filter sock. We can see that based on the required slope lengths, the Filtrex eight inch original silt sock is an appropriate replacement for the previously proposed silt fence. And the reference table, sorry, it's copied below. And then they provided um, a cut sheet with where they took the their calculations from. Amy, this is Commissioner Rose. Did that table say that two silt socks are required over a distance of up to 600 feet? Oh, oh sorry, slope percent was 2% or less. Sorry, I, I read it wrong. Um, and I'm just going to, Jamie Frederick and the wetland agent, jump over to the comments I received from John Hofferley, the town engineer. Uh, he stated, I would recommend its use, however, it should be designed per the equations on page five and for maximum slope lengths as shown on page 16, 17 of the document. These do not, or these do need to be properly installed in order to work effectively, which includes staking the socks into frozen ground. From what I've seen, the flow rates are much greater through these than geotextile. So the height can be less than that of a traditional silt fence. I would recommend some increased inspections until you're comfortable with their effectiveness. 
um, and the height was in response. I said my main concern regarding it would be overtopping. Um, and the, the town engineer's comments were received prior to the memo from um, BL companies. So BL companies was addressing the comments in this email. Commissioner Begman, one question. What is the TSS, which aid in reducing TSS? Jamie Frederick in the wetland agent, temporary sus suspended. Total, total dis yes. suspended solids. Thank you. Was a, what was it? Total suspended solids. Okay. So that that's really like when we, when we think about turbidity yeah. and how cloudy the water is, that's, yeah. that's really what we're looking at. So the other question is, was just exactly that about how, how do you do these silt socks in the frozen ground if there's, has the, has the contractor had experience putting them into frozen ground? Obviously this. Is yes. Yes. The silt. Right. Yeah. The answer is yes. Um, the, the, the reason why we chose this product as opposed to, uh, for instance, a straw wattle or uh, another straw based product, which is similar and does similar things is the weight that the compost and the weight that this um, sock has uh, on its own. And then it's staked um, at, a, at a regular interval. Um, and so what that does is we can, it's a lot easier to get a steel stake um, into frozen ground as opposed to trenching however many feet we have uh, six inches deep um, in frozen ground. Quite frankly, that just wouldn't happen. Um, and so the silt fence wouldn't, wouldn't be able to be towed in properly. Therefore the installation would be incorrect. Um, so what this product does is it allows, allows for that. The weight of the compost by itself is significant, plus it's staked in place. And- um, But the, the other, the Commissioner Begamans, but if there's like ice on the ground, right? Right, right now there's this slush that is frozen into ice. Do you just wait until that disappears so that it can actually be adhered right to the ground rather than a layer of ice on top of the ground? No, we just chip the ice off. But, and if the ground was frozen, we just take a drill and drill it and put the stake through. Um, uh, so this is a, this is Commissioner Boda. I'm, so I'm, I'm looking at these and um, some of the the report from NRCS, and it it talks a little bit about the some of the the, the importance of co the compost that's within the uh, the yes. silt sock, and and then um, and then the maintenance of that compost. Can you talk a little bit about about your maintenance of the um, the compost and the type of compost and how you might choose one over another. That's why we uh, buy Filtrex. Filtrex is sort of the original originator of this and most of their documentation is what you're reading online about these things. So the socks come pre-filled, properly filled from Filtrex with the correct compost in them. So we, that, we eliminate that entire um, piece of the equation. Um, when you get, you can get these up to 24, almost 36 inch diameter uh, for certain applications, in which case they blow the compost in and create this huge sock for all kinds of other different uh, items and all kinds of different applications. Um, on an eight inch, uh, they come pre-filled. So, it, so then do you just, sorry, this is Commissioner Bowe, do you, do you then just replace them or do they, you have like a, a almost like a re replacement compost that you like swap in. No, no, no. You just you just rip. No, nah, you just cut the bag and leave it be, and then you just come in. They they come in two hundred foot lengths. They come on a pallet, and you mm -hmm. just grab the end of it with a skid steer, and you just pull it out, and it un undoes like a snake. Mm -hmm. And you just pull it out, and then the guys walk along it, and they stake it wherever they need to stake it. If it becomes degraded, first of all, it lasts a lot longer than. Um, than uh, uh, silt fence does, especially once the silt fence rips off the stakes and looks all crappy and doesn't do anything anyhow. Um, so, but once the compost becomes degraded, all you do is you just walk by with a knife and just cut the, cut the fabric, the compost sits there and then you just grab another one, pull it right back out on top of it, stake it down and it's good to go. So if there's a breach or if there's an issue, 
you can just grab a section and put it right there and it, um, it gets it gets put it, it's much more efficient for uh, replacement and maintenance mm -hmm. so do you replace it based on field inspection or do you replace it on time no field inspection like on a job like this where the job is in general the, the site's really flat right there's not a lot of load like a lot of water load right coming at this thing um, and, it, and the water won't be traveling fast, right? Because generally that the parking lot out there where the, where Mill River is, is pretty flat, right? And then out up on top in, in back where we're doing the wetlands mitigation is pretty flat there as well, right? So the, there's not gonna be a lot of speed of water hitting this thing. But yes, generally, you know, you inspect it just like you would a, a, a regular silt fence. The guys walk along, once the silt builds up along the side, they take their shovel, they pull the silt back, so it doesn't uh, clog it up just like a regular silt fence would. Um, and, but that's, that's the beauty of this actually is that because the water travels through it better than the uh, geotextile fabric, there's a lot less load on, you know, when that, that silt fence go, is sitting there, right? And the water gets trapped behind it and it's not moving through it very well. Um, there, there winds up being a significant hydrostatic load on it. Um, that's, the, that's what they've worked on with these is to reduce that load and allow better permeability. And actually with the compost, what they've been able to do is get the, the clarity better than the fabric, than the uh, geotextile on these things. So it's, it, it's a good product. Um, and actually like BL's work in, most other states, uh, geotextile is not accepted, and these are the, the, the preeminent uh, accepted uh, way to go. Um, and uh, so it's just, the Northeast is always a little bit slow on, on adapting <laughs> new items, uh, especially in the construction industry. So, but that, that's, that's what it is. Um, it, it, and they, they actually, if you see them, um, they work really well. Like, even, yeah, uh, I'm just trying to think of a place that you could go see them, um, but we don't, we don't have any installed close by right this moment, uh, but I, I can't tell you with it. Oh. You don't want to drop one off at Town Hall? Just sure. leave it on the yeah, well, check it out. <laughs> They're coming Wednesday. Oh, um, <laughs> pallets of them out there. Take a, take a ride by. Yeah. Uh, so again, Commissioner Boda, uh, you know, in, in, in looking at, at these and, and really more than the a cursory glance at these in the conversation here, I think that the, um, the town engineer's um, letter, I think, you know, I can see that they're approved for use in the state of Connecticut. Um, I, I, I would be fine with um, uh, making a modification to allow for the use of um, silt socks in place of the silt fence. Um, uh, if anybody wants to say otherwise, otherwise we can probably make a motion or turn that into a motion. I don't know if you caught that. Just, uh, Commissioner Bassman, one, one question, which is, I think uh, Commissioner Boda actually uh, asked it, which was, but do we know what the uh, compost uh, consists of for this particular application, Mr. Giannone? I can't tell you exactly, you know, what it is. It's usually a, you know, a leaf compost of, of some sort, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to pretend I know exactly what it is. That, that, that's why I'm sure in the Filtrex literature, they, it, it's, it's mentioned in there. I don't know it off the top of my head, but it's why we buy Filtrex because it's, you know, it's like the Kleenex of tissues. It's, it's the, the, the mainstay. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Commissioner Bass, you want to put that language back up, uh, Jamie? Oh, she has one. That makes it easy. Okay. Um, all right. So we're okay? Are you going to just... Sounds good. All right. This is Commissioner Boda. Um, so, okay, so based on the request, uh, we'd like to make a modification to 
permit phase one per the phase one of permit inland wetland 19.11.011 um, 1151 West Main Street to use silt socks in lieu of silt fence. Silt sock and other erosion control measures shall be inspected at the frequency outlined in the site plans and permit condition number eight. In addition to routine maintenance requirements, requests for modification to the erosion controls by the Inland Wetland Agent, Project Engineer, and or Erosion Control role inspection deemed necessary in their professional opinion shall be implemented as soon as possible. Um, this motion is made after consideration of the uh, pros and cons of silt fences and also uh, versus silt socks and also based upon the letter provided by our town engineer and that it is approved by the Connecticut DOT for use in Connecticut. Commissioner Bagamon, second. All right, uh, any further discussion? Take a roll call vote. Commissioner Boda. Commissioner Boda, aye. Commissioner Begaman. Commissioner Begaman, aye. Commissioner Sullivan. Commissioner Sullivan, aye. Commissioner Rose. Uh, Commissioner Rose, aye. Commissioner Bassam, aye. Okay, South Sox, go forward. Uh, we have one other uh, item on the agenda, and that is the site walk scheduled for February 6th. Um, and the reason it's on today's agenda is given the snowfall um, that uh, we recently had and, um, and uh, some impending weather for, uh, I guess, uh, Friday. Um, question is, should we reschedule the site walk or are folk uh, okay with, with uh, Saturday's walk? This is Commissioner Rose. There are two walks, correct? Jamie Frederick and the wetland agent. That is correct. There's, um, let me pull it up for you real quick. 290 Pine Orchard Road and 101 Brantford Road. Right. Yes, 290 Pine Orchard Road, which is um, in ground pool and replacement garage and the 101 and 115 North Brantford Road, which is a new brewery. Um, basically, we just wanted to take the opportunity since we were all together to make sure everyone was on the same page as to whether we wanted to go out on Saturday, um, given the fact that things will be a little bit harder to see with the snow, but I don't know if it's going anywhere anytime soon or not. So. Does look like it might rain on Friday, which might. I think my concern is it rains on Friday and then freezes. I mean, that... Jamie it's Frederick and the one lane agent. I'm in town. I'm willing to go. I'm not trying to change anything. I just want to make sure we're going to have people in attendance. Right. In one of this, Commissioner Begmon, one of those conferences they talked about one person going out with the computer taking pictures doing it virtually uh, and, then if, and then if it's a real bus then you can't see anything because there's snow piles and there's there's ice and then there's you know shoveled snow and you can't tell the topography then we just after five minutes stop i don't know just an idea or just cancel and reschedule This commissioner Bassett, I'm not sure silence means we're walking or not. This is a commissioner. Sure? I, I, I think, I mean, I, I've seen 101 and 115 North Brantford Road. I, um, 
I'm not sure about 290. I would go. I mean, I, I think that it's hard to know if we are not going to be able to, to know until we get there. We might get there and be like, wow, this really stinks. Um, and access is going to be difficult. I think access for 101 and 115 North Brantford Road is going to be like, oh, I don't think we're going to get in very far. Um, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I imagine it would be worth a half an hour of our time, but I could be wrong. <laughs> then it's just a Dunkin' Donuts run, so it's fine either way. Ms. Commissioner Rose, I w I'm willing to go and fail. Better than not trying. <laughs> Ms. Commissioner Rose, with, with, with all that optimism, <laughs> let, let's keep it on, uh, on schedule. Jamie Frederick and the Winland Agent. All right. I think that sums it up, folks. I'll make a motion. This Commissioner Boda, I will make a motion to adjourn. Seconded. There's a second. Okay. Uh, thank you all for um, for again attending on a special meeting. And uh, Mr. Giordano, appreciate the, uh, the comments. And best of luck with the uh, project. Sorry, we weren't able to uh, do more than we uh, we did for the uh, for the bonding issue, but um, we uh, agree that we will you know, we will tackle this at some point and hopefully get your input and uh, come up with a, a change in regulations that uh, may be more accommodating. No problem. Have the all at the end of the year. We very much appreciate your considerations. Thank you, Commissioner Bagman. Just for I I should have said this before we adjourned, but. Um, it should be probably noted somewhere in the minutes that the person who spoke, who didn't identify themselves was Vincent Giordano something. Gi well, yeah, I'm sorry, Vinny Giordano the third. Third. Well, let associate Abby, I have it down, don't worry. Thank you. Good night, folks. Have a good night. Good night. Thanks for the time. Good night. Good night. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.